It's loud. Still sounds good to me. Okay, cool. All right then. So guys, uh, sound dialed in. Uh, for the recording purposes sake, we're going to start today with some deck building tutorials. And my friend LV Pickles here, I'm sure if you're regular, you, you've heard his voice, seen him. And he is looking at making some top tier uh, decks better. So I'm going to now switch over to the view. I'm, I'm remoted into his computer so we can see his stuff here. And right now, it looks like... I'm going to get this out of the way, and now we're in. So, where he's at, and I'm sure where you've all been at at times in the past is, if you're, if this is more directed towards people near to the game, or, or someone who doesn't have as many resources in the game as they would like to have all the cards they would want. And you have to make decisions based on that with your dust, or whether or not to disenchant other things. And oftentimes, if your goal is to be competitive in the game, you should probably just commit your dust into something that is top tier and will remain top tier presumably for a while. Now that's a hard thing to decide, but one of the ways you can decide it is, are these meta decks using the most current expansions packs? Because they rotate out expansions for the last year, each year, into wild mode. And then you can always have access to those cards in the future, but you'll be playing it in wild as opposed to standard, which for now is still the competitive format and will remain that way, I, I presume, always. Uh, other card games have used this method too, like Mag Magic the Gathering. So what we've decided is uh, LV Pickle has got pretty close to what could be a top tier deck for Paladin. And the things he's missing for a top tier deck and other places are mostly from classic packs. So a fast way to navigate these things is you go over here. If you're on PC, on mobile, it's a little different. It's harder to build decks on mobile. If you have an option to do your deck building phase of Hearthstone on a PC or a Mac, I would encourage it. You can do it on mobile, but the interface is much more uh, stymieing. It's not very easy to navigate and get through things. So you can go here and you can select each expansion and you can take a look at what you need. We may have covered this in a previous tutorial video. This might be a better one. So I'll just cover something really quickly. If you've got 1600 dust or you're really hung up on wanting legendaries and keep in mind having a legendary, legendaries aren't innately better than other cards in their use. They are in dust. But for example, in this deck here, we have a, a pretty fast mid-range paladin. It's not it's not as fast as it could be. You'd have to get probably get rid of curator for that. Maybe even get rid of stampeding Kodo and perhaps add uh, more one drop Murlocs. Some of them LV Pickle doesn't own, or I'm just gonna call him Rob for now. If that's okay, Rob. It's, it's strange to call you LV Pickle, but you, everybody's gonna be seeing you as LV Pickle on Spectate and in Twitch, so that might be your identity. Um, Whatever works, man. Okay. So, he doesn't own Vilefin Inquisitors yet. That's a good one, Paladin one drop. Um, so for now, if we go here and look at things, let's just for example say you're wanting a certain legendary card. By typing legendary in here and hitting enter, it will now only show you legendary cards. And for now, it's only showing us the ones that uh, Rob owns. So if we went to crafting, it would show all possible legendaries that could be crafted. Now this includes everything in standard. If we wanted to, we could change it to only show from Angoro. And now we see what his missing legendaries are just from Angoro. This would be in the neutral section. So these are all the legendaries he doesn't have from Angoro, which is not a lot in the neutral section. And the only one here that looks really useful is at least the Trailblazer. And she's situationally useful, primarily in control decks and most so in Priest where they can really abuse the pack she makes. Uh, this is what he's missing for Paladin. He's got the Paladin Legendary from Agora. Doesn't have the, que uh, the quest, but the quest isn't very good. That's fine. Uh, but this is just an example. So let's go here and let's look at the classic packs. These are the ones that will always be in standard. He's missing Tyrion, Forder, and Paladin. Tyrion is one of the best legendaries has always been one of the best legendaries. 
and will probably remain one of the best legendaries for the foreseeable future, unless they decide he's too strong and they move him to wild. But that hasn't happened yet. It did happen to some other legendaries recently. Who knows? Perhaps they'll get tagged. But he's at least solid. So that's something that would be good to pick up out of a classic pack, for sure. If he's planning on playing Kaladin. And a lot of times, you can even make room in the fastest Paladin de decks just for having Tyrion as your late game, last thing you drop, help you close out the match. But then you'll pay for it sometimes by drawing him too soon in your hand, and he'll tie up your hand. Uh, here in the neutral area, we get to see all the legendaries he's missing here. Thalnos is good, but he's got one. Captain Dreamskin can be okay for Pirate Warrior. Le Harrison Jones can be okay in certain certain metas. Leroy has always been a good a good card for uh, face decks to close matches out. He remains that way, so that'd be a good one to pick up. Karen is situationally good. Black Knight is situationally good in certain metas. If Quest Pirate became I'm sorry, Quest Warrior became super popular, Black Knight would probably be seen more. A lot of people are running taunts right now. Alex Strauss is a, a really big card for Mage. Uh, because setting the opponent's health to 15 opens up a whole new win condition for Control Mage. But it can also be good in Dragon Decks. Dragon Decks aren't quite what they were before Blackrock Mountain got uh, put in the wild, though. Blackrock Mountain was the big first push for Dragons uh, when expansions came out. So Ysera can be good, and even Deathwing can be good situationally. Um, so it seems like there's a fair amount of Good or really good legendaries Rob can get from Classic right now. Now, if we were looking at this not in the Paladin class, let's say we went back out to this screen. That's the best place to look for things. Because now we will see all the legendaries possible in Classic, including, including the other classes. So now you'll see they all pop up here. And we can see all the legendaries he either doesn't have or does have in the different classes. It looks like Archmage Antonitis would be good to pick up. King Crush, not really good. Scenarius is, used to be much better in Vanilla. He's not very good now. Prophet Valen's not very good now. Van Cleef's good. Very good. Alkiri's got. Taraxxus he's got. That's good. Grom Helmscream is, is good, but we haven't seen him much because Jade Druid shut down Control Warrior. Uh, and now the only reason you're seeing Control Warrior is that the quest is powerful right now. So, while Grom Hellscream is a good card, and he may come back into being good, uh, Jade Idol is stopping that right now. And I won't go into detail on that right now on the stream. That's a whole different conversation. But, as of now, it makes a lot of sense for him to buy Classic Packs over... Well, I shouldn't pick Karazhan, that's an adventure. Let's say over Old God Packs. If we look at the Old God Packs... Nazoth is good. Yogg Yog can be a good closeout, but uh, the mechanic is very unreliable. Yasharaj is being seen right now in Ladder in a Ramp Druid deck, but is hard to play. Deathling Dragonlord has never really been in the meta. Sogath could be a tech decision. Or not a tech, but an ultra card decision. Uh, and a very slow deck. Twin Emperors was good when Cthune was good, and Cthune's not good right now. So, um, for the most part, Malkrock was... Good in aggro warrior before it got better tools, so he's not good now. Chogal's not very good. Halazil is very good in one specific kind of shaman deck. He's better when you get him out of Firelands Portal from a mage. Uh, Zeril is, is a good card. Harold Village, not very good. Ragnar Slightlord is an exceptional card. Uh, also for Paladin. Anomalous, not very good. Princess Yhiran, never found a spot. Fandral's good. So there's some good legendaries he could get out of Old Gods, but not as many as Classic. Uh, however, there's a smaller pool to pull from. So he still has the same chance of getting a legendary card out of any kind of pack he buys. And it basically equates to what people call a pity timer for legendaries. But for, to a certainty, you will get at least one legend every 30 packs. And you might get it sooner. But I think, uh, to my understanding, I, I don't know this to be canon or absolutely true, but to my understanding, every 30 packs, Blizzard has some sort of algorithm built in to make sure you get at least one legendary. So, 
hopefully you'll get them more frequently than that. And, and particularly Rob has a really good rate of getting legendaries. This this guy pulls legendaries like a pro and yeah, usually good ones. Um, which is it's nuts because I, I can only I can only describe how many trash legendaries I've pulled over the years comparatively speaking to the good ones. A lot of the good ones I've had to craft instead of pull. Um, so, we'll, we'll do our due diligence here and take a peek at Gadget Zan. Coon is alright, not, not great. Knuckles has not seen much play. Sully is not very good. Wicker Flame is good. Very good for Paladin. Roz is fun. That goes with like the Reno kind of decks or Kazakh kind of deck. Shaka the Collector is good for Rogue. White Eyes is good for Shaman, but not necessarily the decks that are top tier for Shaman. Cruel is not very good. Hobart's not very good. And then Kazakus is not what he was. Like, Kazakus is a great card, but without Reno to go with him, it's definitely fallen off from being top tier in the meta right now. Reno going in the wild. The rest are not very good, so it looks like he's more incentivized to buy packs from Classic Old Gods was okay, and then Angora we already took a look at. So, he, Warlock is trash right now, unfortunately, and Kalimos is a very specific legendary to be good. Shares him so much fun. Obviously, everybody's experienced the road quest at this point. We know it's good. These are both good cards. Last Kaleidosaur is not great. Pyrus is, is good. Uh, neither of these are very good. And neither of these are very good. So, really, your decision is probably Ungora or Classic are your best, but you, an argument could be made for Old Gods. Uh, maybe not. Let me look one more time here. Because all, uh, all three of these Old Gods would be good to have. I think part of the decision, too, is that there's cards that aren't legendary for me that I need out of Classic, too. Yep. To start building some of the yep. decks that we've talked about to make better Mage decks. I think there's yeah. more legendaries you, you would like out of Classic than any of the other expansions. Yeah. And then maybe if you really want certain legendaries out of these other... Um, you just, like, maybe you really want Ragnaros Lightlord, which you don't need for the fastest Paladin decks, but you could get away with. Like, he's a really great card. So maybe you just save the dust for him if you really want to add him to your Paladin repertoire. And then something to think about, guys, too, is maybe you want neutral legendaries that are, are, are great. Like, Nazoth could be good for almost any class if you want to run Death Rattles. Death Rattles are better in Wild than they are in Standard. So I wouldn't recommend you go out and craft Nazoth right away. Um, but that's just something to think about, too, is neutral legendaries or neutral high-cost anything. We're, we're looking at legendaries right now, but... We could also just type in Epic here, I believe. And now we'll see all the Epic cards. That he, they're, they're growing blue now because he has enough dust to craft them. Let's move this. For, actually, we need to move this so we can see your dust. Um, let's see if we can get this out of the way. Yeah. So this is a way to navigate. And a couple of new commands I learned, guys, is the extra command to see if you have extras of anything. To help you get rid of things where you have more than two cards. So like you can have you can have golden versions. And the only difference between a golden card and a regular card is purely aesthetic. It's just looks. So golden cards disenchant for more dust. And if you're not looking to have a fancy golden collection, you you probably incentivize to dust your golden cards to get more dust back to then use that dust to create regular cheaper versions of more useful cards elsewhere. Uh, that's why there's no goldens here, because we've already dusted all mine. No extras. Uh, he de You might have a few yeah, goldens still that you don't... Sometimes it doesn't make sense to dust a golden common, because you get 50 dust from it, and if it's a good card and you're going to use it, you're really only gaining 10 dust. Is that worth right. it? I meant my golden extras. That's why none of them were showing up. We dusted them. Yep, yep. And that's all that I had. Were All the extras that I had the last time we looked at it were gold. just happened yep. to be gold. And a new thing that I just tried for fun was if you type new, uh, he, has, he hasn't got any new cards. You can see the newest cards. Those are the ones that show up with red highlights at the top if you type new pack. So it's a fast way to see your newest cards without having to go through your, your giant collection of, of what could be. So... 
uh, that covers that part of the tutorial. And uh, what we're going to look at now, and we discussed this off stream, is he's already got a, a, a pretty close to top tier Pirate Warrior deck. It's missing Leroy, but we have a poor man's Leroy here that kind of does the job. It doesn't. It may, the deck's still playable. I've even seen people uh, in Legend have to play this card with Pirate Warrior. When I was playing in Legend, they plop this sucker down uh, instead of Leroy, it, presumably because they don't have Leroy. Because, sure, it doesn't have the negative aspect of giving two one ones to the enemy, which also allows them to kill Leroy with it the next turn. But Leroy is six damage for five mana charge, so it's just at that point in the game, it's cheaper. Uh, and you close matches out faster, and then the one one whelps that he gives the enemy don't really matter at all if you're if you're finishing them off. So uh, it is better to have him, uh, but he's got patches. That's that's pretty crucial too. And uh, other than that, this is looking pretty top tier. What I will say right now, uh, pirates, and I think it's a good idea have removed either one mortal strike or one naga corsair and put in one spellbreaker instead to silence all the generous amounts of taunts that have now shown up in the meta. Or maybe silence uh, things that might kill you faster than you can kill them, something crazy. So, for example, let's say you're up against a mid-range hunter and they've Galaka crawlered one of your pirates, but maybe you still have a chance of closing them out. I had a match yesterday where I ran Pirate Warrior because I was frustrated. I was playing Control Mage all day and ranked at rank 5. We're about a weekend of the month, so rank 5 is basically legend play right now uh, and I had seen control all day and people were teching against control mage so I decided I'm going to try pirates for a moment and see how it does and then I immediately queued into the first aggro I'd seen all day and they were running Galaka crawlers and they were eating my, my pirates and it's just not a good time so let's say you remove one Naga Corsair and as a four drop you instead put in what filter do we have on that there's no result right now? Ah, we're still in old gods. So now we need to go back to standard cards. Let's include everything in standard. We come out of crafting. So in the four drop section, there's something that's, I think, if included in the basic packs. Like it might be free to everyone, but it's at least in classic. It's a common card Spellbreaker, Battlecry, Silence, Minion. That's four drop. It has four attack. That's good versus priest. Uh, three HP, kind of low for four. But it silences a minion. And so maybe you can silence a taunt and then push the rest of your board through to finish someone off. So it might help you versus Quest Warrior. But there's also many, many other decks running taunts right now that really shut down Pirate Warrior. So I think Spellbreaker is a good idea as a decision. We'd call it a tech card. But uh, right now in the current meta, with Galactic Crawlers running around... And more taunts available than before with Tar Creeper, Tolvir Stone Shapers, Stonehill Defenders that generate extra taunts. Probably not a bad idea to run Spellbreaker. Uh, do you want me to put it in, Rob? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. The question is, what do you replace? One Mortal Strike or one Naga Corsair? Those are the two that are less core. And I would say that's personal, personal uh, choice. Uh, they're pretty equal in potential value, I would say. Um... I think having a chance to draw more, having a higher chance to draw Mortal Strike is closer to closing out matches than Naga Corsair. I, think I'd I feel that way too. That's the decision I made in my deck. So, uh, cool. We caught that. Wasn't really we one of the goals. So matches, I was just hoping that Mortal Strike would come out. Yeah, yeah. And it's sometimes you get that extra six damage proc from Mortal Strike, and it's all the difference in the world. Um, so, uh, we know that. His Secret Mage deck is pretty close to top tier for Secret Mage. Uh, I'm not sure it's even missing anything at all. You could argue you would want Pyros in. Um, Faceless Summoner is the decision that makes sense. It's not necessarily required. Water Elemental yeah, is good versus Aggro. Made that. Well, if you didn't have Water Elemental, what would you have? Maybe a Cabal Lackey or something, but 
I'm seriously not convinced Cabal Lackeys are actually good. There's compelling arguments for it. A lot of people claim they are. In my own personal play, I've played Secret Mage maybe 150, 200 matches over the last several months, and I, I, I tried Lackey, and in my <laughs> opinion, they were, on, they were at their best pre Angoro. So, uh, I guess we can leave it for now. How has this been maybe, performing maybe for you? you? Put, I don't know, something, maybe you put something like Thalnos or something like that in there? Thalnos could make sense, but he doesn't make as much sense as running as with Volcanic Potion. But he yeah. does cycle your hand. I mean, Thalnos is not a bad choice at all. That might be better. Had the Water Elementals been working out? Have you played it recently? Um, I've, I've tried playing it a little bit, and I haven't had much luck with it. The people are, it just people like are people really starting. Mage has been on top for a minute now, and people are really figuring out how to play around it and even teching against it, like Eater of Secrets and stuff like that. I was going to say maybe a Cabal Courier, but it looks like you don't have any. And they're also, they've also got a lot better testing for Counterspell and other yeah. things like that. Yeah, so that, one of the strengths with Secret Wage was is people would just blindly throw themselves, like, maybe this card, I don't know that it's worth crafting. I mean, it's a good card, but we might be using Dust for a Paladin right now. Um, but let's, so Thalnos might Paladin work. Thalnos might work. If you're seeing a lot of aggro, maybe you go back to the Water Elemental. But, uh... <coughs> You might get that little extra bit of damage with a Fireball or Frostbolt towards the end that matters. Or maybe you just play him and he draws you a card and it helps you early game. He's flexible. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad idea. So now we've decided we're going to focus on trying to make his Murloc deck better. Um, to do that, right now it's kind of being pushed into two worlds at the same time just looking at it. It's not bad. I can see it winning a lot of matches. But right now, uh, Chums are in in place of Inquisitors because he doesn't own them. If, if he had Inquisitors, he'd probably be running those instead of Chums. Uh, same thing with Murloc Tidehunters with the Bluegill. Uh, so in, in some of the fast Murloc Paladin decks, they're not even running Bluegill Warriors anymore. I think the one on Tempo Storm right now, which, take it for what it's worth, doesn't even have Bluegill Warriors in the Agro Paladin list. They literally have the Grimescale Oracles instead. Uh, we could do that. We could make something closer to an Agro Paladin. But what's keeping him from doing a true Control Paladin is he doesn't own Tyrion or Ragnaros Lightlord. Uh, and those are pretty crucial in that. Now... One thing that's interesting with Stonehill Defenders is you have a higher chance, and I need to look up the exact percentage, but you have a strong chance of drawing a class taunt if there are taunts in your class-specific taunt uh, cards. You have, a, I think, at least a 66% chance of one of your three Discover taunts being a class taunt. And Paladin happens to have extremely, extremely good taunt legendaries. Uh, and, and also, it has Grime Street Protector, which is not a legendary, but it's still a useful taunt. So you have a chance of getting Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. You have a chance of getting Tyrion. You have a chance of getting Sunkeeper Tarim. These are all really great cards. So Stonehill is, I would say, better in Paladin decks than certain other classes. But it's maybe good in all classes if you just have a kind of deck that wants to stop aggro. Uh, another one worth mentioning is Shaman has some really good class taunts with White Eyes... Earth Elementals and Alakir the Windlord, even if you wanted to. So oh, I'll be right back. Sure. So for now, uh, I won't do any dusting without Rob, but what we're considering crafting is the Gentle Megasaurs. Those are a big deal for Murloc decks. So they came out of Angoro, and he doesn't have any. Uh, it's a neutral card, too. So the other thing that might be really useful to him are Vilefin Inquisitors, which are our 1-3 Murloc class card. Uh, but that's only for, for Paladin. So if he were to put his dust into that, that would be fine. It's a really good one-drop. But so is Gentle Megasaur. And there's other classes that Murlocs can be really good in right now. And Gentle Megasaur might get applications in those other classes. Like, maybe you want to try the Murloc quest with Shaman. It's not top tier right now. Who knows? Maybe it could shift to that in the next expansion's release. Maybe there's things that really help it. But uh, in general, Gentle Megasaur could be used in any class. And I would 
more importantly, say in this context, is more important for his deck synergy than Balfin Inquisitor is. Um, so we'll probably be crafting one or two of these. And maybe we'll be making room with more dust to have enough. He almost has enough dust to craft the second one already. So we might going through disenchanting things that are less useful uh, to give him the ability to have these. And we might remove out our Peacekeeper completely. Uh, I think if he's got the option to start a new deck, we will. He does. So... Uh, there's decks in here you can delete too. Some well, we have plenty of space. There's four extra decks. So since you have been playing this, and maybe you could make this your more control-focused Paladin deck and leave it that way, and we could adjust it that way if possible. I don't know. Without Tyrion and Ragnaros, things like that it may not make sense. Um, I also okay. don't think you have Lay on Hands, which might be a substitute. Ivory Knights could be... so. Maybe we leave this... Oh, you do have Lay on Hands. Okay, there might be... You might have the means here to make a Control Paladin deck without Tyrion in it, and then you just hope to maybe get him out of Stone Hills. So let's leave this and not screw up your statistical analysis. Let's make a fresh deck. His deck tracker will then make what we change, a new version of that deck. And Rob, I, uh, one of the regulars on the stream, I just told him about deck tracker a few days ago, and he's already knows the system better than me. We have ways we can retro put it back. So if we're doing a deck building tutorial right now, we're going to start a fresh deck. And guys, we're going to get into playing rank play later. I'm just doing this uh, tutorial now to start the stream, and then we'll be getting into rank play, but we're going to be well, exporting this video. Reset. I'm sorry, what would you say, Rob? So I was just going to say there's ways to reset the stats in deck tracker? There is. I can show you that, oh, too. Cool. Okay. It's, I, 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 go ahead. Continue with what you were doing. I just yeah, started. yeah. And I think I'll do a separate deck tracker tutorial uh, probably another day. And we'll get into playing rank soon after this. But for now, since yeah, this no, is an yeah. instructional stream primarily. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah this is, I, I'm keeping this an instructional stream. So for now, we're going to go over some more deck building tutorial. And I'm going to export this to YouTube. And if anybody's watching live, hopefully it helps you there. If you have, if you have questions, let me know. And then we'll be getting into rank play in a little bit. Um, so, we're going to be making a fast Murloc Paladin deck. Faster, but it's going to still probably be mid-range. Uh, and at this point, you're cool with crafting a Gentle Megasaur, right? From what we've talked about. Rob? I'm remoted into uh, LV Pickle's account right now. So what you're seeing is not my account. I'm, a, I'm in with Team Viewer in LV Pickle's account helping him build a deck. So we're going to craft one Gentle Megasaur for sure. It's worth it. The synergy is just too strong with a bunch of Murlocs. Especially in Paladin right now. And what we'll be looking at is maybe dusting some other things uh, intelligently to see how to create uh, better cards so he's closer to a more competitive top tier deck at this moment. Another reason we're picking Gentle Megasaur is it's from the latest expansion. So it'll be rotated out of standard later than things like Vilefen Inquisitor would that were also considered crafting. Because Vilefen Inquisitor came from the Old Gods expansion. And that's going to be rotated out sooner than Angoro. So next year, uh, Old Gods, Karazhan, and Gadgetzan will all rotate out in April. But the three expansions from this year will stay in. Angoro and the two that haven't come out yet. So when you're spending your dust, you might want to be thinking about the long term of the game. If you plan on playing for a while, you may not want to be crafting uh, things from Old Gods and Gadgets in. If you don't have the Karazhan Adventure yet and you're considering it, I recommend getting Karazhan still now. One, because it's fun to play the adventure. Two, because it's the only expansion that doesn't require packs. So you're guaranteed to get a Legendary out of each wing. So if you spend... Worst case scenario, 30 packs to randomly get a Legendary because of the Pity Timer in. Maybe 20 packs. That's 2,000 gold to get a random Legendary. In Karazhan, you'd be spending 700 gold to get several good cards. Some bad ones. They're a fixed set of cards, but you're guaranteed a Legendary each wing. So from a value standpoint, it's certainly worth the 700 gold for each wing. Uh, it's still it's June now. You'll be able to use it in, in Standard until April. So I highly recommend, if you haven't gotten Karazhan... Save your gold and buy the Adventure Wings. It might take you two months to generate enough gold for all the Adventure Wings from scratch, but I still think it would be worth it. And in the end, if you don't like the cards, you can dust them 
and you'll be getting higher value out of that 700 gold most likely than you would from buying random packs. So that's what I'll say about that at this moment in time, June of 2017, the tutorial. If you're watching this tutorial years later, uh, just message me in my stream and I'll give you more up-to-date knowledge. For now, we're going to build the deck from the most powerful cards first. So in a Murloc Synergy deck, uh, we know that War Leader, War Leader is one of the strongest cards. Murlocs revolve around that. So let's go ahead and put that in. Other top tier, we can just start with the Murlocs first. We'll type in Murloc here. We'll see what he has to offer. Uh, Gentle Megasaur, we just crafted, we know that. Uh, Finja, he happens to have. It's not necessary for a deck, but we can capitalize on it, so we'll go there. And let's see what else he's got here. Rockpool Hunters, extremely good. Um, and right now, it would make a lot of sense to have Cold Light Seers. Rob, are you there? Yeah. How would you feel about crafting Cold Light Seers? There are 100 each. I'll take, um, this is the card here. It's a three yeah. cost that gives your Murlocs plus two health. And a faster Paladin yeah, deck, I would say they're extremely card. crucial. Plus, it's only 200 dust, and you get two of them. Um, so I'd highly recommend making both of these, even over a second Megasaur. Uh, if we're going to, since we know that he doesn't have the best control Paladin cards, but he does have access at the best mid-range Paladin cards, we're looking at making him a faster, more mid-range Murloc Paladin deck. So, are you okay with putting the dust into these? Absolutely. Cool. That's what I would do. Um, so, that's a big improvement you'll see already, uh, probably, in your uh, early and mid-game. And it's also a card you're probably not upset in getting later. However, it is a card that Vilefit Inquisitor helps give you value if you top deck at late game because your hero power is a murloc. You can always just hero power and do that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, if nothing else, it's a 2 3 body, right? Absolutely. That happens to be a murloc that will get adapted by Megasaurs or buffed by War Leaders or buffed by Rock Bull Hunters, so on and so forth. So, I believe he's also got Hydrologists. Hydrologists are an extremely powerful card because the Paladin Secrets are at their most powerful right now. Paladin Secrets. Uh, historically haven't always been the best. Avenge was good back in Wild, but right now they have Getaway Kodo, and that's insane value on a lot of things. Redemption is very handy for keeping the Murloc Synergy alive. And Eye for an Eye can be a win condition all by itself versus Freeze Mage. And if you don't understand that mechanic, I'll explain it later today because we'll probably still try Freeze Mage at the start. But essentially, long story short, if you pick Eye for an Eye, it is a Paladin Secret Let's just go here and look at it. He's got it. So when your hero takes damage, deal that much damage to the enemy hero. So versus a mage using ice blocks, which is the number one deck in the game right now, top tier. We'll see how long that lasts because everybody's teching against it at the moment. Uh, they're, they're sort of abusing the power of ice block, which they whenever they would normally take lethal damage on, a, on your turn, their enemy turn to them, Ice block will pop instead, make them immune, and they'll live another turn. Well, if you can manage to get early board, which is easy to do versus a mage when you have a ton of beefy murlocs fast, uh, if you can make a way to get them to 1 HP and then play eye for an eye afterward, they're going to lose. At best, they're going to draw the match by killing you at the same time they kill themselves because secrets can't proc on your own turn. So... If they're even just pinging your face with their hero power to check for eye for an eye, they'll take one damage and kill themselves on their turn. And they have no way of killing you without doing damage to you. So, that is a checkmate. And I have won so many matches as Control Paladin versus Freeze Mage. Basically, with using Hydrologist to pick at least one eye for an eye, just sitting on the secret in my hand until I have them at one HP, and then... They don't have a way to get around it, and they can't also kill me at the exact same time by, like, pyroblasting my face when I'm at less than 10 HP or 10 HP, and then they kill themselves and me at the same time. But even then, you've made a draw, and neither of you lose stars in ranked when you draw. Neither of you gain stars, neither of you lose stars. So it's still a favorable outcome to losing. Uh, if you play it too soon, if you pick eye for an eye and a mage has more than, let's say a mage has 2 HP, 
and they have ice block up, and they have a second ice block in their hand, and who knows, maybe they've created a third ice block from Primordial Glyph, or gotten out of Cabalus Tome, or some other crazy nonsense with the Discover mechanics. They can ping your face, take the one damage, still not die, and you're in no better a place. Because their ice blocks are still going to pop on your turn. So you really don't want to play it too soon. They might screw up and do more damage than they should to you and kill themselves and not kill you. But at that point, you're, you're giving them an opportunity to not screw up. And at high level play, the smart mage player will do everything he can to play around this and assume that you've picked eye for an eye. So if we're talking about legend level play, that's something to think about. I had a match yesterday when I was playing control mage and the guy picked eye for an eye and just played it on turn seven. And I just pinged his face, got rid of eye for an eye, and it did absolutely nothing for him. And he could have kept it till later in the game because he did get me one HP and pop my block. And it would have won in the match or at least drawn the match. So um, that's why Hydrologist is so good on top of being a Murloc. Uh, so at this point, we would probably consider putting in, let's go back to Murlocs only, the Murloc... Uh, let's take it off the one drop filter. These guys right here. Tide Hunters go really well with getting a board out to get a better Cold Light Seer, to get a better War Leader, to get a better Adapt. They are uh, sort of vulnerable to Maelstrom portals, things that do one damage. So if you're playing a Pirate Warrior and you're ravaging ghouls, your Whirlwinds are going to die to that. So they don't, they're not as sticky as they could be because their HP is low. But they fill the board up. Uh, they're, they're not a bad stat line across two minions on turn two, and oftentimes you can do it on turn two. They may not have an answer, and then you get a much better war, Murloc War Leader the next turn, possibly. So if you're playing a deck with Cold Light Seers, it makes a lot of sense to play Tide Hunters. It also might even make sense to run Oracles right now, especially if you don't have other one drops. If you're doing an, ex, an extremely fast deck. Um, because this is something, even if you don't... I don't know that you necessarily want to play it on turn one. There's better turn one Murlocs. Rob doesn't necessarily own them. We might craft another one. But uh, while these are generally not good value, they are in a deck this fast with this many Murlocs, I would say. So we might consider keeping those in at this very moment. Balfid Tidehunter looks appealing, but you need to know that the ooze it summons is not a Murloc. So it's really just a 2 cost 2 on Murloc that happens to summon a 1-1 one, one Taunt Ooze that might get buffed from Sunkeeper Terum, which we can go ahead and put in, because uh, that is certainly a good enough card to include. It's maybe your heaviest card in the deck. Uh, but I don't know that we'll use Bile Fins. One thing we could look at using uh, making is a Murloc... I think it's called Tide Hunter. It's Tide Caller or Tide Hunter. We might put in the Chums too. We might go as fast as possible with this deck. And maybe I'll play a deck like this on stream to start today, Rob. Actually, because I think it could be good right now because I saw so much control yesterday. Okay. Um, this right here. This is 100 and it's a really good one drop. And I think you're going to need some... A shot at having a Murdoch Tide Collar opening into Rockpool Hunters and stuff. I would say this is even more important than Valfin Inquisitor. And it's cheaper. So it makes more sense. We're at a place okay. now where maybe oh, we create okay. enough dust to create two of these. Uh, we can yeah. certainly create five dust from dusting a common. Uh, I'm almost wondering if you get rid of one hungry crab. That's 100 dust. I don't know that you ever need to run two. Um, yeah. One makes sense a lot of the times when there's a lot of murlocs in. But two just seems too much. Because it's still a tech card. At best it's a 1-2 beast. Maybe it's good to have two for aggro druid or hunter. But I, I don't think so. I think there's better one drops than running two of them. I can make one makes sense. Okay. Are, and and along the same lines, I think I have two Galaka crawlers too. I mean, the same similar. Well, this is epic. That's a hundred dust. Like this, you could turn oh, this right, one yeah. straight into a Murloc Tide Hunter. So if you're cool with that, why don't oh, we right, get rid right, of one? Those are epic. Nice. So let's do that. And let's turn it into a Tide Caller. And then all we need is five dust now, uh, which we can easily get from a bad common card, and we can make a second tide caller. So uh, let's look for a really bad common card. This guy. Actually, you can dust this. This is terrible. It's always been bad. 
Oh, that's 20 dust. You cool with it? Yeah. It's, fine. it's just not, for two, for two drops, it's just not good enough. It's never has. Even in vanilla, it wasn't good enough. Um, so now we can go back to the one drops. I'll, I'll do Murloc to make our lives easier. And we'll craft another one. I think it's a pretty good investment of dust. It's a neutral Murloc. It's in classic, so it's going to stay around. It's not going to get rotated out with the expansions. And Murloc seems to be a fun synergy that Blizzard likes to make. There's been multiple expansions that include Murloc synergy. A lot of expansions won't include old synergies. Like, there hasn't really been any Inspire mechanics whatsoever since the Grand Tournament. But... Death Rattles were a thing they introduced with Nax Ramus, and they've continued to make future Death Rattles. They've, Murlocs have always been part of the game. I think they'll keep making them, so I think it's a pretty good investment of dust. Okay, so we're already looking at a much stronger Murloc deck just from what we've made. So, so far, we've made five really powerful cards out of the dust we've used for this, this deck. That's good. It's a very wise use of dust, in my opinion. And we could probably make room for more. Uh, the the thing we'd be looking at now is do you really have enough dust to make another Megasaur? That might be very nice. Um, let's see if you have any trash legendaries. I think Prince Malkazar is a trash legendary personally. He's not as good as he looks. Now, if you're playing yeah. in, in... I'm only talking in a strictly like high, higher level competitive sense. If you're if you're playing between ranks 25 and 15, and you don't have any legendaries, and you want a shot, but maybe you own Karazhan and you got Prince Malkazar, so you have a few legendaries, and you want to have a shot at having a fun deck, he's a very fun card. If you're playing for fun, keep him. He's fun. You get five extra cards in your deck running him. They're random legendaries. It could be a fun mechanic. Now, streaking in a speaking in a competitive sense. That's not good to get five random legendaries because there's actually quite a few bad legendaries out there. A card being legendary doesn't innately make it a good card or useful card. Uh, so you're also diluting your deck. And in Hearthstone and most strategic card games, you're rewarded for thinning out your deck. So if you can do things like play a card that draws another card and you have all the cards in your deck you've handpicked for a purpose and it supports that deck's synergy... You want to be drawing the cards you chose to put in your own deck over random cards most of the time. There's exceptions to that if you're trying to just make literally a fatigue deck, like going to the end of the game and having more resources than your opponent. Malkazar might make sense. But honestly, if you're doing that, just play Jade Druid because the Jade Idol by itself is a, you never fatigue. It's, it's ridiculous. So I won't start my harp on that right now. But uh, if you're cool with it, Rob, I would say you could dust Prince Malkazar. Unless yeah, you want to I, keep them for fun and we'll look for something different. No, I, I, I prefer building decks and playing the deck that I have. Okay. It's going to invalidate your custom priest. Uh, um, alternatively, yeah. you could do Baron Geddon. Baron Geddon's not very good. However, he did just get the elemental tag. So there might be some point where he becomes useful in elemental deck. He's yeah, been useful no, at certain points. Waters down stuff. Um, the custom priest was just you playing around one day. It's a deck that can be deleted, actually. Okay, cool. So there we go. That's another Megasaur. Uh, now, Rob has a very, I wouldn't say liberal view, but Rob is not a completionist in his collection. And I agree with that because he's newer to the game. He's only been playing uh, maybe six months tops, uh, perhaps less than that. And he's doing well in a competitive environment. He's got to rank five, I think, multiple plot times now. And, uh, just fine. I got the seven in X. Yeah, there you go. But that's good. That's very, very good for the amount of time you're playing. So he's more focused on competitive play and generating higher value cards. For those of you guys sitting in front of your computer or phone, it's totally up to you. I'm a completionist because I've been playing since beta and I already have most all the cards I need. So at this point, I'm keeping golden versions and dusting the extra regulars. But I also have spent a hell of a lot of time in this game and play a lot. And I've had the luxury of playing it since beta. So I got a head start on all that stuff. So all the gold I've generated from quests over the years has gone into quite a big card pool. Um, so, let's go ahead and make another Megasaur. Yes. Very good. 
if you guys are watching and like help building your decks, I'm I'm very I'm perfectly willing to help you build decks. We do on the stream all the time. Um, I'm looking. I just started a month ago. I'm looking to build a base. I've had uh, pretty good success and getting. We're already north of 600 views one month in and 30 followers, and a lot of that has been newer players looking for information because a lot of streamers out there don't explain what they're doing. So you just have to watch and guess and try and become good that way. Or just do it on your own. So I'm here to help if you'd like. I think if we're doing a deck this fast, it makes sense to have the chums. Um, but if you're given the option to play Tidecaller on turn one, you should probably always do that. Even if you have the option of chum first to maybe buff a Tidecaller. Yeah. So what's really cool is you get the you have no other Murlocs in your hand. You have coin and you have Tidecaller and chum. I would probably... Then consider playing the chum first coin into tide collar to make it a two three instead of a two two the other way around. So that's just an example of how those kind of things can synergize if you have coin and you're going second. Uh, so now you need you need card draw. You're going to blow through your cards really fast. We need to see if you have divine favor. You do not. That is one hundred. That's not crazy. Hmm. Let's build the other things first that we want from Paladin. Let's see. Are there other things we want? <clears throat> we have most of the deck done. Consecrate and Blessing of Kings are good, but if we're going as fast as possible, you may only want one Consecrate because you're on turn four... I don't know. It depends how many divine favors we can get in your deck. We'll take two true silver champions. Helps you close out the match. We could put in steed, but honestly, this is going almost as fast as fucking possible. You may you may not even want the steed. Steed's really high value, and it might help you close the game out too. We might we might end up doing that. We'll see. But I'm more concerned about you running out of cards now. And I'm thinking that we might need to see if we can make enough dust to build one or two Divine Favors into the deck. Um, so, do you still have cards in Wild that could be dusted? Probably. I, I don't know if we've dusted all of them or not. So, we're not going to finish it automatically. We're getting close to a, a really strong aggro Paladin deck. We're going to now go to Wild Mode because Rob played just for a moment over like a month or two. And things... Actually, no. New things have been moved to Wild 2 since then. Um, because everything got shoveled out in April. Like uh, League of Explorers and things like that. So let's see if you have any trash legendaries in Wild Mode. So now we're in Wild Mode. You can tell by the vines. And let's put the filter on Wild Mode cards. Oh. Well, we could do it one at a time, I suppose. So, no legendaries in Nax Ramos. One legendary in Goblins versus Gnome. Dr. Boom is so good. I feel like you just can't dust the Dr. Boom, even if you're... Like, this card def was is so, so good. Uh, I I don't know that I can... So is that. Jeez. If you ever want to go to Wild, you do not want to dust those. So are those. I don't know. Let's look at Epics instead. If you really want, and you really are serious about never, ever playing Wild, but those are all extremely powerful legendaries in Wild. Okay. Now I know there's no way you have no epic cards here. Maybe it didn't take. Hmm. Do they seriously not have epic cards in those expansions? I find that hard to believe. Maybe not. I never really looked at it under that light. Huh. All right. Well, let's try rare. I didn't really, I didn't really get a lot from those expansions. The cards, I just thought some of the adventures had epics built in. So Azure Drake's been moved to Hall of Fame. <laughs> Nerubian eggs you could dust. Okay. They're good, but only in wild. And only in a select few decks like Aggro, Egg Druid. Uh yeah, I'm not gonna play a lot of wild either. I don't have the I don't have the card base. I don't feel like to try and build decent decks to 
speed well enough because, like I said, I prefer focusing on complete, uh, competing. So. Six of evil, you can dust. I hate that card. <laughs> Um, well, that's it from Wild for rares or better. We didn't get a hell of a lot of dust from that. Hmm. Let's take a look at your epic cards out of... There's some... I've gotten enough other regular cards, too. I don't know how much dust you can have. Well, we might go crazy on Wild Commons if we really need to. That's only five dust each. Now let's look at all the epic cards you own. Fight Promoter's not very good. Even the greediest decks aren't running this. You cool with dusting this? Yeah, that's fine with me. All these other ones in neutral. Mountain Giant is is good for Reno and Wild, and it's good for Handlock, but Handlock's not good in standard. Um, do you ever plan on playing Reno Lock and Wild? No, I don't plan on playing any wild anytime soon. So we can get rid of Mountain Giant? Sure, that's fine. It's not a bad card, guys. Those at home. Uh, Mountain yeah, Giant is still... I, I don't like seeing that one go. I, I... Mountain Giant is still playable in uh, standard. Now, this is not a bad priest card. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I want to give that one. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. So let's go to rare. You're only looking at priest. You realize that? Oh, I didn't, thank you. I just got something important. I'm only looking at Priest right now. So you need to be out here where you can see all classes when you're searching things. There's only going to show you neutral and the one you're in. So now we need to go back for Epic again then. That might have been why you weren't seeing Epic. Yep. Living Mana is good. We're not dusting that. In fact, I think we crafted that. Uh, Dynomancy might be fun. It's not necessarily good yet. But it could become good for like a control hunter deck in the future. This this one has potential to become good in future expansions, or maybe yeah, even other up. ones. So snake trap's not bad either. These are good. Definitely not giving up glyph. That's good. Not giving up glyph. And That's good. That Prep's good. Not giving up prep. Spirit echo has potential. It is good in certain control shaman. Uh, Vein of doom you could get rid of. It's fun, but yeah, it's not good. good. It's too it's too expensive for what it does. And when it was good was when you could randomly get Malgana some certain like incredible wild demons out of it you can't get anywhere. Twisting Nether Golden Shield Slam. Oh wow. Shield Slam's good, but Golden Shield Slam's worth four hundred. But if you wanted to craft regular Shield Slam it'd cost four hundred. And it would only be good in a Control Warrior deck, which you probably don't have the cards for. I don't have the cards for Control Warrior. I've looked at it. That's your call, because this is not a bad card. Um, do it. We can use the dust for something else. I think right? we could make it something immediately useful, like a Valfin Inquisitor. Yeah. And you're already short one Brawl, too, so that's 400 dust you'd need. You'd run on two Brawls. Um, Twisting Nether. Warlock's the worst class in the meta right now. Twisting Nether is good for Reno Lock, but Reno's now in in uh, in Wild. So I don't even know if I need twist I don't think you do. Right not, what's that? I don't think you do. I don't think so either. In a competitive sense. Like I said, I'd rather be building. I just want to make sure. I didn't have pre-selected for Legendary, right? Yeah, Open the way gate could be fun. Those could be fun. Clutch your mother's office, you could honestly probably dust. Don't touch my Jaraxxus. <laughs> yeah, no, Jaraxxus <laughs> is good. You don't want to get it. Oh, this is not good. That is this, good or not? That's not good. Uh, you get, it's way, I, way too guy, expensive. I, said, I don't even know if I want him for anything. I, it's way too expensive as a board clear. If you're thinking about a warrior only minion that comes down and then clears the board you'd probably be better off doing primordial drake on turn eight sleep with the fishes as a four eight taunt yeah. um so yeah, yeah. Get rid of him. I've, uh, i just recently that's one of the lucky legendaries i got recently that i was telling you about 
I mean, honestly, you could just dust Geddon if you wanted to. Getting close to being able to cra um, craft Tyrion. <laughs> Do you want to go for that? Um, no, I, I like this Murloc deck. Well, wait, I'll just buy decks for now. Been okay. Dust if we dusted Garen, you could craft Tyrion. Geddon. But... We but could I all... think you're close to building a competitive Murloc deck. Yeah, and I don't know that you would even want Tyrion in it, uh, which is I, craziness, I know. Like, you could get away with it, but I'm not sure you'd even want Tyrion in the deck this fast. But well, if, if you craft Tyrion, it might open up you going a little bit slower if you don't want to go this fast. And well, Tyrion will probably be good till the end of time. If you have Stonehill Defenders in there, maybe you pull him anyway. So That's very true. That's very true. Okay. Well, uh, open the way gate might be fun. Yeah, I'll keep that one. Uh, I, I would probably keep that myself. I might want to build around that one someday. Yeah. I need Antonitis for that. Uh, Evolving Spores has started to show up in some of the aggro druid decks. I don't know that it's good. It's kind of expensive. Claxi Amber Weaver, you could totally get rid of. You're not going to be playing Cthulhu Druid, right? No, oh, no. All right. Jade Idol is probably the, this is probably the most broken card in the game, guys. If you haven't figured it out yet, this card is defining the entire fucking meta, even though it's not even a top tier deck right now. But the reason it's not is because every other deck has had to build around it to beat it. So, um, you're probably never going to need two Tolvir Wardens. I don't think you need two of those. Even if you were going to do some sort of quest hunter deck or some fast hunter deck where that pulls. Terra Scale Stalkers, you'd probably never need two of. No. Death Rattles aren't as good as they used to be. Most of the best Death Rattles are in Wild now. I could see keeping one. Golden Potion of Polymorph. Probably don't need that. Even the best okay. Secret Mage decks aren't running Potion of Polymorph. And you, yeah, usually the only reason you the, get it the, is the, you why this is the best choice out of a Cabal Courier or something. Yeah, and it's really hard to control. If you think about regular Polymorph, you can at least control what it lands on. This, yeah. they could drop anything. But they're probably yeah. not checking for it, so you might really catch something. Like, there's still merit to it. Plus, it has Secret Synergy. But uh, that's another rare card you could have. 100 Dust right there. I doubt Grime Street Enforcers will ever be that good. Golden Mimic Pod. Mimic Pod is useful, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't uh, want to give that up. I'm trying to get... I, I never play Rogue, but I'm trying to get Rogue cards. I don't want to give up. Elemental anything. Shaman don't even run this. It's not good enough. It might be someday, though. Uh, I think I would Destin if I were you. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, there goes Ghetto Mental. It's part of why it's Ghetto, though. Thunder Bluff's in Wild now. Oh, yeah. Dis Disenchanted. Yeah, I've got a couple decks I can delete after we're done with this. I know that. Yeah, probably not going to be using this. Probably not going to be using... This. Easy now. <laughs> what about Void Terror? Do you want this? No, I, that card, I don't even understand. I guess it could it's, be useful. It was good with eggs back in the day. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, Nerubian yeah. eggs, you plop it down, it eats yeah. the egg, it pops the thing out of the egg. There are new eggs, yeah. but Warlock's in a terrible position. Can't afford to Death Moral Strike. Um, Alright, I think that's enough for now. Angry Chicken. Angry Chicken can go. Oh, yeah. Probably until the I, end of time. Every time I get those, we dust them. I would love to know how many angry chickens I have dusted in my Hearthstone career. I wonder if there's a st statistic cut for that somewhere. I would venture to say I've dusted at least 25 angry chickens. Maybe 30. <laughs> um, and several of them gold, as I recall. Uh, these are pretty bad. <laughs> you get rid of both of these. Yeah, those are... I, those, yeah, that card... 
matter of fact, I think we dusted them before and I got them again or something. All right, you're very close to Legendary. Let's see what's missing from that Paladin deck. I mean, Vilefin Inquisitors are opened up now if you wanted. Tyrion is opened up. It's a tough choice. Let's go back to well, Standard. You have your second Megasaur. So you could do two Vilefin Inquisitors, or you could do... And then some other things. I don't know what else you would need for this. Oh, Divine Favor. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta do Divine Favor. Probably two of them, too. Yeah. Are you cool with that? Yes. Okay. You may only end up using one, though. I think you'll use two. But most of the time you run one. I don't know. Um, it's only 100 dust. I think I would probably do it. Okay. But, well, if you... Putting two in there gives you more of a chance to draw it, right? When you're... Well, if you're running that many one drops, you, you really want to just be able to flood the board over and over, and then you've won or it's kind of like aggro mentality, like you've won or lost soon in the game. Um, yeah. But I beat a guy on turn 12 with this aggro paladin deck I'm building you yesterday at rank 5. Uh, I beat a freeze mage. Uh, it, because I kept divine favoring, <laughs> and I drew through almost my entire freaking deck to do it. But uh, he he always had a giant hand, and he couldn't spin his hand fast enough. And I just flood, flooded the board too many times for him to remove. And he even generated an extra flame strike from Primordial Glyph. Wow! So you cool with making these guys? Yes. All right, it's starting to look pretty good here. The meta has shifted to counter mage more than paladin two now this month. We'll see how that shifts back, maybe. All right. There's the Inquisitors. Let's get the Divine Favors in. Pretty close to done. Pretty close to done. Um, the I, I'm forgetting the name of the taunts, the draw taunts. Yes, absolutely. We, we can totally put those in here. In fact, I think I'm running those to you. These guys give you options for late game if it gets to that point. Okay. And, let you, and maybe save you some Murloc so you can get to something for him, too. That's true. All right. Um, at this point, I would consider adding either one Blessing of Kings. Probably not, though. I'd probably put in a Spike Ridge Steed over that. Or, yeah, I like Spike Ridge Steed because it's another one that can... Or a Second Consecrate. Let me I see what I have in mind. I think this is card for card what I have in mind, and I was three and over yesterday. I'm going to test it more today. Um, I got to reboot our stone here real quick, and we'll get to playing ranks as soon as we're done with this, guys. But it's a uh, it's important to me to put content out there, and this will probably be seen more on YouTube than on Twitch. Uh, and I'll edit it out. Any any of the extra stuff, but. There's not enough tutorial content out for Hearthstone, and there's 70 million players playing it right now, so we're going to try and fill that hole. I'm going to take a quick peek into my deck and see what... I'm curious as to what the one-card difference is, because I don't think it's Steed. Oh, it's Stewards of Darkshire. Those actually worked out for me quite well. I have not. I've never played that card. I don't think. It's from the old gods, and it gives one HP and minions divine shield when you play them. And you're running chums, two chums, two oracles, and then the tight hunters are two more each. So it's like having eight one HP murlocs, and then also your hero power is always one HP. And divine shield's nice to counter, like volcanic potions or any AOE that does damage. It, so, oh, that makes this faster. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Spike Ridge kind of. But that means you have something there. extra yeah. in. Yeah, no, I like that. There must be something extra in right now. I, I mean, wonder I, what it I is. I feel bad having to. Run, I feel bad almost having to run these faster attack decks or whatever. With the cards I have, they're just easier to build. These don't have don't have so many. You I know don't. What I, mean? I don't think anyone should feel bad playing aggro. Um, it's always been part of the game, and. 
the meta is forcing people to have to play aggro because of Jade Idol and Quest Rogue. So yeah. if someone's going to feel bad, feel bad for playing Quest Rogue and feel bad for playing Jade Idol. Because those, yeah. those are the two mechanics defining the game, uh -huh. rewarding you and almost forcing you to play aggro. Because the best way to beat Quest Rogue is to kill them before they complete their quest. Believe me, I have tried to run them out of gas by just removing the board over and over and living. It is extremely hard and damn near impossible unless the quest rogue is just making mistakes or drew really badly in the beginning. But even then, ha more than half of their deck is one cost things, and the rest of it is usually two and three cost things plus vanish, which they, if they've gotten to the point that they're playing full mana van for vanish, they have completed their quest, they'll vanish and still play more things back again that probably have charge. So, uh, I just think aggro is part of the game, and until they change charge from being able to go to face, there probably still will be. But even then, aggro druid exists without really using too much charge, so uh, I, w I wouldn't feel too guilty about that. Let's see if you have stewards. Yeah, if you're gonna play your deck after you do this too, that would be cool. I'll do it. I'll do it, and we'll see how it does. Yesterday, freeze mage. So we'll need to craft them, but they're only a hundred. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. Okay. And you'll still be left with a little dust, a little spin and dust to spare. Close to an epic right. quality or a couple of rares. So this is cool. I would say this is a very good use of dust and uh, making the most out of uh, LV Pickle's library. And so at this point, uh, I took out the Consecrate, put those in. That's what Mine's not even running Consecrate. So this is uh, damn near as fast as you can possibly go for Paladin right now. You could maybe look at doing more weapons and adding pirate synergy with saucy deckhands and patches, but I don't think it'd be as powerful as Murloc synergy is. Um, so this is carbon copy. What I, I'll probably try on stream and ranked and I had some success with last night when my brain was fried. I went three and zero with it. That's a very small sample size. That's not enough to really judge from, but it's better than being zero and three. I'll just say that, I guess. Uh, Hearthstone's cool. very streaky. So, so this deck seems like it's gonna, it'll be fun to play regardless. Yeah, and if you want to slow it down, you can a little bit. You can make uh, you can make changes. So that I think that'll conclude the deck building tutorial for today. And I just wanted to put something out there that shows people if you've been doing your daily quests, farming gold for a couple months, you might have resources and be able to really uh, even Google cards if cards are good or not. You can check out Hearthpone, but Hearthpone has everything under the sun in it. That website has everybody's deck so just because you see somebody's deck on there doesn't mean it's a good deck um there are variables that help tell you whether or not but even on hearthpone if if it even if a deck has a ton of likes it doesn't necessarily mean it's good what i would urge people to take a look at is data reaper if you and that's a syndicate vicious syndicate or something but if you just google data reaper hearthstone it'll pull up their site and you'll probably get an old report but you just click on reports and it'll show them as current. I think we're at number 51 right now. And that literally takes all the data from the, I think the people that use deck tracker, but it might be, they might have access to more resources than that. And it just literally shows you what people are playing and the percentage they're playing it in legend ranks one to five ranks five to 10 or 10 to 15, things like that. And you can usually see what's the best by what's being played the most. Uh, and then in there, they'll give you examples of, what the top level legend players are using in those deck archetypes. So I think Data Reapers through Vicious Syndicate is the best source of information for Hearthstone. And maybe you can couple that with Tempo Storm, the thing Raynaud built, but Tempo Storm can be hit or miss too because they'll be giving a brief description of a deck. They update it every week, that's kind of cool. They break things down into tier and they give you suggestions for tech substitutions, that's all right. But the problem with that is oftentimes they are just showing you what people are playing at the very highest legend, like top one, 10 legend finishes. And once they've gotten to that level of legend play, they're probably using more tech cards than they did to grind on the ladder. And in general, when you're facing a smaller amount of opponents, or maybe the same opponent more than once, because in high legend play, you get queued in the same person more than once sometimes, because there's just less people playing at that level. And you're ending matches at the same time, because you just played them. So, it's kind of like tournament play, whereas you can get away with making more tech cards because you're not just facing a general amount of a mass amount of people on a ladder. 
So tech cards are better in smaller, more focused areas where you know, if you're going to a tournament, you know, I'm going to see this guy, he's running Freeze Mage, and uh, the decks I want to run have a really bad matchup, so maybe I'm going to use Harrison Jones to eat his ATS charges off Medivh, because I know he's running Discover Mage with Medivh, or Eater Secrets to eat Ice Block, or something like that. Uh, in general, on ladder, it's a clusterfuck, and you're going to be seeing a lot of the same type of decks that are top tier, but perhaps not enough to check specifically for. And that's what Tempo Storm shows you, is what those top legend are using at the time, and what they hit the top legend with. But they may have made changes along the way to make it easier versus the smaller pool of opponents they're facing. So, use all these as resources. Make your own judgment and then play the play the ones that that suit you but just know that a lot of hearthstone is luck a lot of it's rng and it's very streaky oftentimes you'll go on win streaks it'll feel really good and then oftentimes you'll go on lose streaks and it'll feel really bad the best thing to do is just to play more track your data on deck tracker take a look at what you're losing to what you're winning to in deck tracker i'll do a deck tracker tutorial uh another day we're going to get into playing ranked here and do our typical stream soon um but you use that information and make informed adjustments if you're really taking it seriously and want to play competitively um so good luck thanks for tuning in for the tutorial if you're on the stream and watching live we're about to shift into ranked and i'm really sorry if i've missed your comments live i haven't had the chat live for this portion of it but uh you can follow me at www.twitch.tv forward slash prolific Vegas. So I encourage you to come hang out. Any questions are welcome. We keep a positive environment and good luck in your endeavors. So this will be where I edit and stop for the tutorial. And now I'm going to go out of your, uh, your screen here, Rob, and TV here and switch back over to my normal OBS view. Okay. Sweet, man. Thanks for sitting in for that part of it. I think that uh, 